Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It could be evening. It could be the morning. We welcome all of you to join us in this short program of Christian Foundation. We need to discuss on Christian Foundation and uh, concerning the family. It's important that we we dig into the lives of the families because uh, I think God is interested in families. He started off with the families. Adam and Eve, even as you know that they failed the mission, God still restored us back. So I believe families need to hear this today. Individuals need to hear this today. And those who are about to be even married sometime later need to hear this today. So let's go to the scriptures. I would like to read from the book of uh, 1 Peter, chapter number 3 and verse 7. And we'll pick up from there. Reading from 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Yes, that your prayers be not hindered. That's the final and that's the bottom line. Husbands and wives, when we pray in agreement, our prayers are answered. We want, we're looking for answered prayers. We're looking for God to hear us and answer us. Let's see what, what are the questions through the scriptures that we could understand. <clears throat> yeah, one of the things that we can see we can ask a question, what does it mean for husbands to dwell together according to knowledge? Yeah. What does it mean really for husbands to dwell together according to knowledge? I believe knowledge is important. We need to need something. We need to we need to understand something concerning marriage, concerning a Christian marriage. I, it, it doesn't matter even if you're not a Christian. But still, for all, there are principles that would work in the life of those who put those principles to work. Not just hear the principles and know some of the principles, but let's understand what it means to dwell with your wife according to knowledge. And I have met people who have lived with their wives for 10 years, 20 years, and they have still understood. They have not still understood. They have never operated in knowledge that would that would build their families that would really cause their families to really uh, be an enjoyable family things are getting dry in the lives of families we find we meet we meet with people and, and people feel well marriage is not too good with me I don't know why I don't know whether whether I met the wrong person no I believe it's not I believe really it's not. It could be that we are not dwelling. We are not dwelling according to knowledge. I believe wives need to understand. The husbands, the husbands need to understand. So this scripture is quoted very clearly, and it says, "Husbands need to understand their wives. Husbands need to understand their wives and to and to dwell according to them with knowledge. It's important. You need to know." How important is your wife? You need to know you married somebody. She's not an object, but she's a she has a personality of itself. Within her, there's a personality. And and husbands as persons, we need to understand them better. It's important once we understand them, then they begin to respond better. They always say, You don't understand me. That's right. We have not understood them because we're just boys. It's it's just we 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 love love we love to play with what we feel is right. But when you come to a stage of understanding, marriage is an important factor. You turn your life from being a boy to a man. And when you come into manhood, you start seeing things differently and you say, okay, I need to dwell with my wife concerning according to the scriptures because we are not reading somebody's experience we are talking about the Holy Spirit who has inspired Peter to write these scriptures dwell with your wives according to knowledge understand her 
understand her her areas that she needs to be understood we find things well they they will be broad minded as we are well they are they will understand they 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 are not narrow minded as you think they are it's because we don't come down to their level and talk to them be with them dwell with them it says dwell with them right how does it go it says likewise the husbands dwell that word dwell it simply means abide with them it's like somebody who, that word dwell also means be somebody who is a resident you can't run away from the home run away from an issue just because she's not in a good mood or she flares up or she finds a fault you don't want to run away from her how do you dwell with her you dwell with her understand certain things and put things in order so that you don't have to you don't have to you know run away and say, i don't want to face this i don't want to come back home i don't want to no no there is no reason there is no reason marriage can be very easily understood and we could put things in order if we dwell with them dwell the word dwell jesus said abide in me that word abide also means reside dwell dwell abide in me means dwell i mean find your residence that's my place i'm not going to go out and try to find any other comfort from outside i'm going to stay there i'm going to attend to the matters at home i'm going to i'm going to see that i that i overcome the situation i'm going to see that i overcome the situation so dwell with them according to knowledge don't just flare up don't throw fits run out of the house and say i don't want to stay in this house because i mean we're talking something very practical i don't feel like staying in this house because things are not the way that i should understand her and put things in order you will always win you will always have a victory when you understand dwell with them according to knowledge let's go to the next one what does it mean to give honor to your wife considering her as a weak vessel once again in this scripture we see as an as husband me also be a husband i understand what it really means there it says uh i it was seven how does it go there it says giving honor giving like honor unto the wife as unto a weak vessel considering her as a weak vessel not that she is dumb physically men are strong physically men can be stronger than women that's the weakness but you don't take advantage of a weak character now that's what god that's how god has made them they're supposed to be in 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 a position to understand just because somebody is weak you don't need advantage that's being malicious the reason god made them i believe is for us to be a strength to her for us to stand with her in the times of battle we don't know what's going on in her mind we don't know how she is facing a particular situation and what she's thinking about at this time why don't we be a strength to her why don't we stick around and be a strength to her okay she, she needs to understand better but she not she, she may not understand the way you understand she needs to be comforted In fact the Bible says love your wives as Christ loves the church who is stronger are we strong or is he surely he is stronger than us that's the reason we need comfort we need Jesus we need even as Jesus comforts the church even as Jesus is a strength to every believer husbands be a strength to your wife husbands be a strength to your wife considering her as a weaker vessel that word weaker consider her it means it means honor her respect her consider her valuable that's what it means there consider her valuable she is precious to you she is not an object that you can play around with she is a personality god created her in that personality and you get the best of her if you dwell with them according to knowledge and if you also honor them honor your wife as a weak vessel not not to take advantage of i mean 
it, it becomes it's a shame if a husband takes advantage of her weaknesses. That's the reason they flare up because they are afraid they won't keep their guards up because husbands try to overrule them and control their lives and think that I need to bring them under my thumb. She ought to be submissive to me. Well, if you want submission, show love. Love is the is the strongest and the most important ingredient for submission. Oh, she needs to understand I'm the head of the home. Yeah, she understands that you don't act like Christ. If you act like Christ and you if you talk like Christ, if you love her like Christ, she will submit to you. And you will find things different in your life. And you will say, My, this is heaven on earth. That, that's how a marriage should be. Right? So Consider her as a weaker vessel, honor her. Don't take advantage of her weakness. Thirdly, what does it mean to be heirs together with the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered? Okay, we pray. We believe God to answer our prayers. We pray faith prayers. We pray in desperation. There's nothing called this prayer of desperation, but there is a prayer of faith. If we really want to pray a prayer of faith, there has to be an agreement. Yes. Wow. Husbands and wives need to walk in agreement. Yes. Wow. Right? If you don't dwell with her or knowledge, and if you don't honor her or or, or count her precious, uh, considering that she's a weaker vessel, and you are you are never going to get your prayers answered. Because husbands and wives they are joint heirs together. They're joint heirs together. You couldn't say, I have, I'm the boss of the house. When I bring something, it belongs to me, and then maybe I'll just share a little bit of it. No, we, we do it in partnership, together. Even if you make a mistake, we take the blame together. Yes. Even if we get the, even if we have the best of choices, things that we have coming into our lives, we we share it together the good and the bad and usually the bad happens because one of us we didn't make the wrong decision that's number one number two we do things in disagreement when you do things in disagreement then you're calling for trouble our prayers are hindered why would we want a prayer to be hindered the devil is not the problem here People outside are not the problem here. It is between the wife and the husband. So your joint heirs, your joint. It says you. Uh, it says being heirs together for the grace of life. You want grace for the life that you're living. You know, grace is the most important factor in life. If we want to live, our salvation came through grace, right? Are living this life, we need a lot of grace, and the word grace means favor. Yes. Favor. We are going to be so favored if things are running right in our lives Amen. at home. So grace for life is important, yes. and and it can put you over in life. Get have your prayers answered. See, if you pray, I say, ah, okay, I'm the husband, I have right to pray, I'm going to pray. And the wife says, okay, I'm going to pray for something else. But there is no agreement there. There is no agreement there. Dwelling together. In fact, when the Bible says, when you are joined together, you are one flesh. You are one flesh with her. So it's just one person. So if that one person cannot be, cannot be in harmony, Abiding together, how would you think that you can get your prayers answered with a divided house? It's going to be destruction. Jesus spoke about a divided house. How shall they stand? A divided house cannot stand. No wonder the children are running riotous. No wonder the children are rebellious. They're you, you want your children to submit and you think I've got bad children, I've got rebellious children. Well, husbands and wives dwell together according to knowledge. 
especially for the husbands, dwell together with knowledge. Right. Understand that and do the right thing and you will see favor in your life. Right. You won't favor in life. But because you're a joint heirs together, both are going to be affected. If we want to go for a journey and we don't have any agreement. Yes. We want to believe for some funds and we don't want to do it in agreement. We want for healing to come into our lives, our family members. We want healing. It's important that you dwell together, that you that you understand, that you 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 abide together and, and, and you do things in agreement. It helps. It always helps. That's right. I mean we have we have had we we as a family we have had disagreements, not that we have not had, but we have come to the place we understood. Immediately we put things together. We have not said, okay, we are made in heaven and we have never had any issues in life. We have overcome that. That's the reason we tell you, don't you let things go yes. pass by. Put things right and overcome. Overcome. Immediately. Don't give time and wait. Mm -hmm. Maybe just resolve things. Resolve quicker, things. Quicker the better. Yeah. Forgiveness yes. is important. Yes, that's a good thing. Bitterness is not the way out. Yes. The Bible says when you when you're walking in bitterness, you trouble yourself and those around you. Of course. So if I'm bitter, usually the men get more. They start with bitterness. Okay, I'm so bitter, and we don't sometimes want. We don't want to even speak it out. We think, well, we can just try to bottle it up, right? But eventually, we are affected. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 and uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15 it says it says uh, uh, let no bitterness uh, be in your in your life maybe we should read that scripture that will help us uh, Hebrews chapter number 2 or 12 12 and verse number 15 it says bitterness is something that will trouble you and those around you Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Many be defiled. The first, be, the first person I'm going to be defiled is your spouse, your children, and those you, you are in coming in contact with. Because your bitter soul is oozing out all that venom out of you, which has already had a poisonous effect in your life now it's coming out of you it's troubling other people so we need to overcome bitterness that root of bitterness yes it's like poison it's poison, it works, like poison. it works like poison that's how it goes it's venom it's like it, 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 it's, it's poisonous it cannot it'll trouble people it'll trouble you and it'll trouble many others around you so let no bitterness be inside of you or don't let bitterness just be rooted in your life and Jesus said a wonderful thing about a, uh, about the tree and he looked at a sycamine tree and he said you can speak to the sycamine tree and command it to be plucked up by the roots and cast into the sea and one of the dangerous things in a sycamine tree is the fruit is bitter the fruit that you eat of the of, of the sycamine tree is bitter. So, in the days to come, we would have some bitter experiences. Yes. It's, very dangerous. it's very dangerous. We don't even realize it. We think, well, it's all right. I mean, after all, I'm right, she's wrong. Or she would say, I'm right and he's wrong. Yes. Well, both of you are wrong. Go before the Lord and repent. Yes. Change. And say, Lord, I don't want this root of bitterness in my life. Jesus said, speak to the roots, speak to the sigmine tree. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you must say, I have faith, okay? Speak out your faith and speak to yourself and say, bitterness, I command you to be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ and command you to come out. And it shall, it shall be removed and cast into the sea. Amen. 
You can cast the vision as oh, oh, that's going to be pleasant. You are not going to have any more bitter fruit in your life. Because you've got to work it out in the roots. You can cut the stem, you can cut the leaves, you can cut the fruits, even the branches. And then it's going to grow again. It's bitter. The fruit is bitter. So let's put these three factors to understanding and bring our families up to the position that we will say, Yes, Lord, I need to put things in order because I need the grace of life. For my life, I need the grace of God. I want to prosper in life. I want to live healthy. I want to be a blessing to those around me. Somebody would have gone by the same road and they wouldn't want to go back into that same road. Take some advice. You might say, oh, I've heard that. I, I, I don't need that. I, I don't think, well, it's not necessary for me. But I'm telling you, somebody has gone through that bitter pathway and he's giving you his experience and he's saying, come out of it. Don't go by that pathway because it's a killer. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's destroying you. That pathway is a pathway of destruction. Go to your spouse, put things in order, humble yourself, swallow that pride of yours and say, I repent. Yes. It's not a bad word. Repentance is a good word. Yeah, change your thinking. Change your thinking. Not only change your thinking, you, you change your actions. Attitudes. 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 You put things in order and say, God, go to your spouse and say, please forgive me. Yes, so change your words, the way you speak. Yes, to each other. Yes. So Harsh words. Yes. They are as piercing of a soul, the Bible says. They are as piercing of a soul. Maybe you are used to speaking harsh words. Repent of that. Yes. Because comforting words are more soothing than piercing words that can hurt somebody. Because it says grace of life. Grace of life. Yes. God wants us to be in favor. In favor. Favor from God. Yeah. We have a right relationship with the church. Exactly. Favor of God works. That's how important it is. So remember these three factors that we learned. Dwell to them, dwell with them according to knowledge. Right? Dwell with them according to knowledge. Right, let's see. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Right? Secondly, Considering her as a weaker vessel, or in other words, honor her, yes. respect her, respect her, speak to her with respect. And some of you men, you speak to others with a lot of respect, but when you come to your wife, you think she's your wife, she needs to understand. She needs to be under my rug. I just, you know, use her as a, no, that's not it. She's not your servant, she's not your bond servant, she's join heirs together with you grace of life. the grace of life what you get she gets what she gets you get in fact the bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and he finds favor right proverbs 18 and verse 22 right he who finds a wife finds a good thing and he shall find favor so you want some favor He's and the lady of your life yeah but you might say you know it, it, that's the reality of life to understand for you to really have favor. You must say, you don't understand my wife. If I wish I had a wife like you, well, if you want a wife like mine, then you've got to work with it. You've got to work out. Three important factors. I know there are other things that in marriage that we have discussed, but we couldn't do it in 10-15 minutes. We have to wind up. But we want you to consider these three important factors. Okay. That your prayers be not hindered. That your prayers be not hindered. Because you are joint together. Heirs together. Heirs together, together of, of the grace of life. You want some grace in operation in your life. Don't despise the word of God. He who despises the word of God shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13 and verse 13 says. Yes. And I would like to pray with you. Heavenly Father. A release anointing yes. to those who are viewing and those who will view later. 
that the power of the Holy Spirit will flow through into their lives and change their hearts and cause them to enjoy life better, especially their marriage life. They will never ever regret their marriage. They will never say, oh, I regret. I wish I didn't. No, you've done the best thing in life. So Father, I pray according to your word of Father, it's your will that they be joined together and they may have grace for life. Thank you, Father, that your blessing is going through, Father, and causing, your anointing is causing uh, every yoke to be destroyed in their lives. Every yoke which is contrary to the yoke that Christ has wanted us to put upon us. Lord, you also have a yoke upon. You said, take my yoke. So I pray, Lord, every contrary yoke to the yoke of Jesus Christ to be destroyed. Destroyed. According to Isaiah 10 and verse 27, the yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. That they would enjoy marriage. Lord, you said to rejoice with the wife of your youth. She's still, Lord, your child. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the husbands would learn to love their wives. Thank you, Father, for touching their lives. Lord, if there's somebody who is bitter, I pray, Lord, that there'll be conviction that will come upon them and they'll change and say, I don't want to be bitter no more. I don't want to let the devil take control of my, through bitterness, my life and my wife and my children. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for touching their lives. You, healing their bodies. Healing. Thank you, Jesus. Right Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right to love each other, Lord. Just as Christ loved, Lord, the church. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We chat Lord will speak good about each other, Father. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father. We speak loving words, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Not bitter words, Lord. Not speak at each other, but speak in love with one another, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you Father. Thank you for your love, Lord. We just thank you, Father. Bless your holy name. Praise, Praise your glorious name. Praise, Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God bless you. Be united. Be strong. Yes. Unity is strength. Yes. Two are better than one. God bless you. Amen.